And this morning we are going to be looking at faith for change of levels. And I know that somebody's level will change. Amen. If that word was for you, let your amen be louder. Amen. Faith for change of levels. Tap your neighbor and say your level will change. Level will change. After, today. After today. Let me hear a louder amen. amen. You know, whatever dimension you have seen, there is a step above it. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, somebody said, Pastor, you don't know what you're talking about. Pastor, I'm a millionaire in pounds. Somebody is a billionaire. There are dimensions. Amen. Amen. So, but what level you are, I decree in the name of Jesus, you are taking a step further. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's start with Ezekiel chapter 41. The Bible simply says there that there are four dimensions of experiences with God. The first, he said he measured 20 cubits and uh, uh, he said the most of his place. He measured the wall house and the breadth and every side of the cubit round the house now so if you look at that ezekiel 41 in the bible you will see that there are dimensions the first it gets to what is called the ankle dimension and then the next it gets to the knee the water flows over to the knees and then the water flows to the waist and then the final dimension is overflow are we together so you see there are four dimensions by which the glory of God flows into people's lives. Four dimensions. Just get the very portion of the scripture so we are specific. You see, it flows like that. It begins, says, ankle deep. That's a dimension. Don't be satisfied there. Then it flows again and moves toward knee deep. Don't be satisfied there. There are dimensions beyond the knee deep. And then he goes further again to what? To the waist deep. And then the Bible says, and the waters overflowed. Are we together? So somebody, wherever you are today, you are moving to the overflowing dimension. But the big question is this. How do I move from my present level to the next level? Because when you don't understand how to do the progression, then it might only just be a folktale. Are we together? You see, you got to be careful when you are in church. It is one thing to be in church. It's another to be in obedience. They are not the same thing. You can come to church and be disobedient. And after 10 years, the one who went to church and the one who didn't go to church, you may be shocked. The one who didn't go to church will have better results than the one who went to church. Are we together? Because you see, these are keys that change lives. And if you don't understand it, you become a victim. Are we together? Yes, but somebody's level is changing this morning. Amen. Without fail, if you are the one, let your amen be louder. Amen. So quickly, let's look at conditions for change of levels. There are conditions. Your level cannot just change. Are we together? Yes, How many of you have seen, you know, okay, when I was younger, you know, I believe I'm still young. And um, uh, if you've seen, sometimes you see a vehicle packed up. And the tires raised. Yes, sir. After 20 years, you come, it's still there. You see, so people say that time changes everything. It's not true. Time doesn't change anything. It's action in time that changes everything. If you have not acted in 10 years, nothing will progress in your life. That's why celebration of age is a stone age philosophy. Nothing about life respects your age. You can be 100 years and ignorant. You will suffer like a two-year-old boy. So that you are getting older does not mean you are getting wiser. Uh, being older does not mean you are getting stronger. It doesn't mean that. If you don't have knowledge of key things, you become stranded. But somebody's story is changing. Amen. So let's look at the conditions for change. Number one, understand your redemption status. You see, if you don't know who you are in God, the only pitiful thing is that you will live, and the Bible actually said, you will die like mere men. You see, one of the things I've noticed, nobody should ever call themselves big boy, big girl, or whatever, until you have discovered who God made you. Let me tell you, one of the biggest challenges you see today is an issue called identity crisis. When you don't know who you are, you want to be the friend of everyone. I'm not blessed with many friends, not because I don't want friends, 
but division I'm pursuing and the line of principles I operate streamline friendship. Are we together? So understand your what your redemption status. It is an anathema for a believer to be crying when they are sick, begging God, if it is your will, heal me. That is a display of ignorance. The Bible says you are seated far above principalities and powers. You see, but if you don't know it, you remain bound. Now hear this. What you know or what you heard does not change you. There are many things. You have heard many things. You see, the, the, the knowledge of the scriptures does not guarantee a future. It is the practice of the scriptures that guarantees a future. Are we together? So you must know who you are. Stop comparing yourself with unbelievers. You are on a higher plane. Study the import and the impact of redemption and then you will know how to function in life. When people are complaining, things are hard. You too, you are complaining, things are hard. Where will be the difference between light and darkness? People are speaking negative. You too, you are speaking negative. No, understand who you are. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18, the Bible said, the light of who? The just, that's that just there is righteous. That's a righteous man. Watch is as a shining light that shines what brighter and brighter unto what a perfect day. Now it shineth more and more. So the redeemed is designed for an ever increasing glory. More and more, not more and less. If you don't understand it, the enemy takes advantage of you. We are called, we are redeemed as what? Besetters. We are redeemed as what? Trailblazers. Take nothing for less. You are not a dummy. Now, let me tell you something. Just to help you by the side in this issue of identity, there are three things I want you to take note of. You are who God says you are. That's the first thing. Let somebody call you fool. That's what they called you. But listen, you are what? Who God says you are. The day you understand that, you have solved that question and problem of what? Identity. You won't go around looking for a necromancer to read your palm. To tell you this is a no, no, no. Number two, I have what God says I have. Question of possession. Number three, I can do what God says I can do. Question of capacity. When you understand this, that these three dimensions I listed are all from God. It's based on what God said. Then you can now find the expression. So somebody looked at you and said, hmm, if I broke up with you, no man can marry you. You just met a, a, a liar. Did you hear what I said? You just met what? Okay. There's nothing. Listen, listen. When you know who God has made you, then you get your. You know, one day somebody looked at me. He said, "He said, ah, I heard you are traveling abroad." I said, "Yes, sir." A man of God. He said, "I heard you are traveling abroad." I said, "Yeah, this is in the year 2010." He said, "I heard you are traveling abroad." I said, "Yes, sir." He said, "Hmm, a lizard in Nigeria cannot be a crocodile in UK." He said, "Go there. Poverty will keep following you and mess up your life." I said, "Thank you, sir." You know why I could say it? He's man. That contradicts the scriptures. So I don't need to fear. There's no need to not fear. No man is bigger than God. When you understand what I'm saying, you will calm down. No, no, this, no, this is not about anything. I say, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Because I know it will not work. I know whose word we will run with. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I did not bother myself. 2011, I now traveled. In 2015, that same man of God came to UK, missed his flight, and did not have money to rebook another flight. He was stranded. Who he called out of shame and told the person, the person said they don't have. He said, but I know one young man. And you know him. He said, if you reach him, he will help you. And the guy called me. I said, ah, is he that man of God? He said, yeah. I said, ah. I said, where is he? He said, he's at Heathrow Airport. I said, I'm going there now. I drove straight, canceled my trip anywhere. 
went straight to the airport. I said, sir, good afternoon. I've just been called by somebody that you are stranded. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, sir, what do you want? What do you want to do? He said, you know, I need to be on the next flight, but I don't have the resource. I said, it's not a problem. I said, go to the till. I'll be behind you. The book, new flight. But I tapped my this and paid for him. I said, sir, where will you be sleeping this? I said, I don't have any resources. Not I said, sir, come. He, I carried him in the car. Booked him in a hotel. Make sure he ate dinner, breakfast. The next morning, I sent one of my guys to go and drop him. And they went to drop him at the airport. He, he went back. He texted me. He said, forgive me for all the evil I've done to you. I laugh in my head. I say, I never had anything against you. You spoke as man. You spoke in error. <laughs> you spoke in error. So, I was never depressed one day by that statement. Because the Bible says, whose report do you believe? Hey, somebody say you're a fool. If the one is what you have chosen, be crying every day in the house. It's your ignorance. You are suffering for your ignorance. Any, listen, there is freedom of speech. People have right to say anything. Somebody can turn to you and say, boy, you look like a fool. Simple. It's their own speech. Uh, but if you're a fool, then you will be concerned. What's my business? Anything I like, let me look like to you. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> I look through the mirror of, the, of God's word. It's what he says about me that I say I am. The way you say I am, this boy is a madman. That's your own opinion. You are not wrong, go. It's your opinion because as a madman, you will see things mad. <laughs> are you understanding me? Because to the pure, all things are... Uh, so, he uh, said, that guy, that guy is a poor guy. Because you're a poor person, so you can identify other poor people like you. That is your own say. Everybody must come to the level you know what God is saying about you and you stand strong on it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Accept nothing less and you will come out in victory. Can I hear you shout a big amen? amen. So that's number one. Say, I'm a best setter. I'm a best setter. And a trailblazer. So the first is to change level is understand what your redemption status and that's why if you are not born again if you have not been saved if you have not received jesus as your lord and savior this service will provide you that opportunity make up your mind to embrace christ that is the beginning of change of levels the light of the just shined brighter and brighter so if you are not a just man you are not packaged for an ever increasing light are we together how many of you want to keep shining? Yes, this is the first step, salvation. You need to be born again. Number two is what? Increasing insight. Hmm. This is very important. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, But we all with open face, beholding in a glass the glory of God. Can you walk with me? One to go. Let's see. I change. I know it's small. You may not see it. Into the same image from glory to glory even by what glory to God so what do we see there very quickly when you lose value for revelation you stop changing levels now hear this and hear me well revelation stirs up revolution you see at any point you stop learning that's when you stop growing did you hear what I said at any point you stop learning, what happens? You stop growing. You cannot change levels with the same level of knowledge. You must keep abreast with knowledge. You must keep growing. That Job said, as it was in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord was in my tabernacle. So, the more you increase in your knowledge of whatever field, then you change what levels. Have you seen people who are nurses? Eh? You see their pay. Then they now went to increase in knowledge, move and did uh, uh, to be a doctor. Will they be at the same pay? Uh -huh. They will not be at the same pay. Why? They have increased in their insight, their learning, their knowledge, their revelation. And guess what? The output changes automatically. Are we together? There are things you will know. You will stop being afraid. One day, a man of God called Elijah was inside the house studying. And then he had Elisha. And then he had his uh, uh, apprentice prophet who was uh, uh, over, uh, uh, you know, ministering things to help him. And then that day, the king sent men, 50 chariots of men to come and arrest the prophet. So when the gentleman saw it, he was jittering. And he ran to the man of God. He said, man of God, man of God, the people outside the police are here to arrest us. While the guy was frantic, the man of God just said, child, 
I pray God will open your eyes. That's all. Why is he praying it? What is he explaining to him? Because they that are with me, my God, are more than they that are with them. Why we? You are rejecting because of what you don't know. The day you know what I know, you calm down. Take juice and drink. The man of God offered him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He was not fidgeting. Why? He had understanding. He had insight. Are we together? And the rest was history. So, as you step up in knowledge, there are things that get better. Let me tell you. You don't have a marital problem. What you have is a wisdom problem. Do you hear what I said? You don't have a marital problem. You are not the first to live with a woman in the house. Somebody has done it and did 50th wedding anniversary. So, this one you are in six months and it looks like thunder wants to fire the whole region where you are. It's not, there is something you don't know. Are you understanding me? Now listen, you are not the author of marriage. If you want to succeed in it, consult the author. And the author wrote a book. It's called Bible. But that's the least thing you want to read. You just want to go to the internet and see seven keys to marriage. It doesn't exist. <laughs> If you see anything, it's theory. When you finish, it is practical. You will know that those things are not, are not just easy. Are we together? So, caution. Explanation doesn't change your levels. Revelation does. Stop explaining. The reason I did not prosper is because I'm the black man in the whole hospital. You are lying. <laughs> Let me tell you. In this country, there are black men doing well. There are Americans doing well. There are Asians doing well. All tribes. Bible says, he said, for the same God who is good to all is rich to all. It's not, listen, stop your color is not your limitation. <laughs> Have you ever seen a brain surgeon who knows his job? Then when he applies, they will be asking him, Where are you from? Who cares where you're from? You, you know the job, you know the expertise, they give you the position. They did not, he said they did not choose me because in that place I was the only black. He said, Lie, you are not competent. Go and sit down. Go and sit down. You are not competent. Sometimes people just, people just be misbehaving in the name of color. Say it's color. Let me tell you, color cannot limit me anywhere. I've never been limited by color. What I'm carrying inside is Elohim. Are you getting what I'm saying? Greater is he that is in me, not outside me, than he that is in the world. Your, your complexion is not your limitation, it's what you don't know. Me cannot uh, look for jobs. Say I'm struggling for job. I'm struggling for acceptance. For where? No way. It's not. It's not the environment. No. There are no dry places. There are dry people. When you know who you are and what you are carrying, you call the shots. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He say, Ah, is it because he's a pastor? No, I've seen pastors begging raw for free. I'm sure you know them. I've seen it. It's not, this is not respect a pastor. Are you with me? He doesn't respect. Sir, with due respect, everything in my life is working. It's not confession I'm making. Marriage is working. Family is working. Finance is working. Health is working. Everything is working. Not because I'm a pastor, but because I'm engaging my sonship status with the word of God to get the required and expected results. Somebody hear what I'm saying? So stop making explanations. Have revelation. It will change your level. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Why are you arguing tight? Because you lack revelation. Say, hey, why, why will I pay tight? Why? You, don't, you lack revelation. The day you know the benefit, eh, you won't wait to receive your salary to pay tight. Put gun on my neck. I will not eat my tight. Do you know why? I have seen one time rich men fall who are begging now. I won't call him, but in Nigeria, listen, I'm not telling you a story. I know one time state governors eh, who are begging to eat food today. So I've seen mighty people fall to the ground and I advise myself that my tithe is my kingdom security from the bad days. Yes, what are you talking about? Are you the first? Go and sit down. Right there, he said, bring the tithe into the soul house. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Any day any pastor prays for you and tells you he has rebuked the devourer, tell him, pastor, you are lying. God says he's the one that rebukes it and he does it when you obey the covenant of tithe. Which man of God did Who gave him the power? He said he rebukes the barra for your sake. If you are with me, sir, here. God rebukes the barra for your sake. But that is only when you are in obedience. Listen, I have never seen in, go and read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I have never seen any kingdom abundance that occurred without consciously subscribing to the law of generosity. 
as long as the earth remaineth, see time and harvest shall not cease. It's, there's no prayer that can change it. He said, You are a powerful intercessor. You will pray that there will be no tomorrow morning. Who gave birth to you? He said, You are a powerful anointed man of God. You will pray and there will be no afternoon. Who gave birth to you? Or you wake up now, you say, hmm, Thank God for that yesterday prayer. If not for that prayer, we will not have had to today. today. Are you a joker? Those things are natural course of life. They will happen. Whether you are praying or not. If you are with me, it's right here. Hey, somebody getting blessed? So for change of levels, you need revelation. Let me tell you something. Service to God is not force. Do you know that service to God is a choice? Can I tell you something, sir? Service to God is not a calling. Stop waiting to hear any voice. Offer yourself to be used by God. He will bless you. Let me tell you. What I will say now will disappoint you. I've never heard or seen Jesus appear to me. I'm not ashamed to say it. If you like, leave the church. I have never had appearance of Christ. I've never seen Jesus say, my son, my son, come. I want to use you. I've never seen it. I've heard many men of God say it. I thank God for their life. And I'm not saying they did not see. I have not seen before. I have not seen, this is my I have not seen Jesus before. I don't I've never heard voice. My son, I want to use you. I've never heard the voice. I just desired to serve God. And that's where I am today. <laughs> what are we not carrying? We are carrying the same thing those who saw him are carrying. <laughs> are you understanding me? And sometimes even with better results. What are you talking about? Stop discouraging yourself. When I taught on vision, I told you there are three sources of vision. One is revelation. You sleep, they show you. You saw two canker worms I've never seen before. My own vision came, one, by association and by hunger inside me. I want to see men who are in ignorance. I want to see them receive light. I want to see people function in the knowledge of God. I said, I'm not blessed with revelation. I'm not, I don't see anything. I sleep, wake up. If I see you, I kill you in my dream. Simple. I don't, I don't have time to be seeing anything. There's, there's nothing I'm seeing anywhere. He say, he say, what did the Lord say? Somebody called me before. He said, Pastor, please interpret my dream. I said, even my own, I've not interpreted it. <laughs> so your own will be a body to me. Why am I interpreting your dream? He said, Pastor, are you saying as a man of God, you cannot interpret it? I say, I have not interpreted my own. <laughs> it's when I finish my own, I will come to you. Amen. I have not interpreted my own. He said, but Pastor, I, I said, what are the things you saw? I said, well, let me give you just the simple wisdom you use. If you see snake, eh, you write snake down, yeah? Go and study. What is the nature of snake? You can tell whether it's of God or not. Are you simple? Are you with me? Uh -huh. So, go and look for the objects you saw. Interpret what they symbolize. Then put two and two together. It's your business. But as for me, until I interpret my own, I don't have interpretation for you. Read Bible, you will know God. <laughs> Amen. Are we together? I don't believe in those things he's saying. Why should I give my 10% to the Lord? I just believe pastors are being crafty. God bless you. The day you will lose your job, eh? When you will lose it, you will not even know. When they check your name, you will you, they, that is, it will not show you were once employed there. <laughs> when you will lose your job, you when you lose it, they, they ask you, say, I used to work here before. Even your card, you swipe it like this, you will know. They say we have never seen this card before. You have not seen anything. Uh, let me tell you. Every arrogant and proud person has one destination. It's disgrace that will finally culminate in destruction. Before you start making noise in your heart, go and study other proud men you know, including some of those your family members, eh, who were the first to drive Jeep in your village, but today they are playing draft because they don't have money. Go and study it. You are not the first. Stop all these things. You see, you see like, let me tell you. You see, I know your father. No joke. I know his biological father. Eh? You see this guy now. What I say? I say, you see this your slim side. You will add weight. He said, Pastor, 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 Pastor. I said, go and ask your father for his former pictures. His father used to be like this. Slim, like this. Quick. The days are coming. This your belly will be round. <laughs> Years ago, I used to confess that I will never preach the gospel with pot belly. And I was not doing what is required of me until pot belly met me by force. <laughs> then I now went to do what is required of me. That is leaving me. It doesn't happen by confession. It's a, it's a, I, I decree in the name of Jesus, I'm going slim. Now lie. <laughs> no, for you to build muscle, you must face your muscle against weight. If you wake up in the morning and see muscle, check it, it's growth. Call ambulance. Muscles don't grow by mistake. 
they are intentional. They happen on two, two ways. Number one is specialized diet. And number two is conscious exercise. That's how you grow it. You know, by this in prayer. No. Those who will do Olympic, in whether, whether it's four years to come or two years or one year, I don't know the year, don't quote me. But what I know is they have started practicing now. Nothing is sudden. You are too sudden about life. Every day you just wake up. Ah! Next week is exam. Then you start reading. Then calling pastor. Pastor, please, next week is my exam. Pray for me. Pastor, I also sent a seed. I will eat the seed. But if you did not read, you will fail. And uh, don't come back and say, I sold to pastor and I did not see the evidence. Did you read? Yeah. He's reading now. You read first. Jesus is the, brought grace and truth. Truth is that you read. Then grace is, Lord, help me. Yes, Amen? Yes. Uh, you have not read book. He brings it. You think I'll return it? No, I will eat the seed now. And when you fail, you will fail like somebody who never met God before. <laughs> the next exam you have, you can prepare. Amen. You have an interview, you will not read. When it's that money, oh long, oh long, oh long, as I go there, oh, cover me with your glory. God say, What am I covering? Ignorance, I don't work with it. I can't cover you with glory on ignorance. No, 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 no. Those that know their God shall be strong. You must know something. You are weak because there's something you don't know. When you know your God, somebody has to say, Pastor, I've served God for many years. I said, I don't want to know the years. Are you doing exploit? If you are not, you don't know God. Simple. Daniel 11, 32. Those that know their God shall be what? Strong. And what will they do? Exploit. Do. Is, is it not a verb? Is it not a doing word? What are you doing? Not to be shouting everywhere. So explanation does not change level. What changes your level? Revelation. I pray access will be given you today into revelation that will change you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening to part one of this message. Click on part two for more. God bless you.